One morning when I turned this TV on that you see in the photo, I had nothing but static on the audio and the video, just as if the antenna was disconnected. Years ago I had trouble with a circuit board on this TV and it had a crack in it and I soldered that. But I have never really done a major, and I consider replacing the tuner a major, I have never done a major repair on a TV before. So really it was a challenge more so than anything. It wasn't the money and it wasn't the set. I mean this set's not worth $35. I could have used this TV for a monitor but I decided to go ahead and try to fix it because this TV did work with audio imported into it. The video part of the TV did work so I could have used it for that. But I wanted to go ahead and fix it anyway. Maybe the grandkids could use it in their room someday when they get a little older. There is a lot of information on the web, on the internet. Sam Goldwasser. His name kept coming up over and over again in forums and in searches that I was doing. And Sam is a brilliant man. And he was kind enough to email me when I asked him questions. And Sam, I hope you uh, get wind of this, of me thanking you for that. But if you'll Google any kind of TV problem you have, you'll come up with a lot of different opinions and from that you can kind of weigh it all out and decide what to do. That's what I did. I did extensive research and most everyone said that when you had static on audio and video that it was probably the tuner, especially if you could import video if the video part worked. Now one thing you need to do before you start this repair Make sure that you have a desoldering iron and a soldering iron. A desoldering iron is available from Radio Shack for about $10. Uh, don't think that you can use a big soldering gun and, and just take this tuner out or what component you have out because the solder will become solid again before you can remove that part. You have to use a desoldering gun. So having said that, then we can continue. If you have good basic soldering skills, you shouldn't be afraid to try this. If I can fix it, anybody can. I ordered the tuner from Matt Electronics. Not only did they have the best price, $35 tax and shipping for this tuner, but also I found their website extremely easy to use in researching the part number. Now, this tuner, some of the prices were $65 on some sites, and that was probably a Sony. The tuner I got was some kind of generic, but it works fine. So, I would highly recommend Matt Electronics. This is some free advertising for them. They did me right. Uh, extremely courteous service and shipped it very promptly, and everything went well. In this photo, the small yellow arrows show where the five screws that hold the back case go. And the large yellow arrow shows the transformer. And the large red arrow shows the high tension cable that goes to the tube. Now for safety's sake, you need to discharge this. And you can Google how to do that if you're going to be in contact with this. Now, I was careful to avoid this area, so I didn't discharge the capacitors. Be aware that that's very high voltage. High voltage will be present even with this television unplugged, so be very careful. Here's another photo showing the tuner location, which of course is the yellow arrow. The red arrow shows a small RCA type cable that plugs into the side of the tuner. And the blue arrow shows your line in voltage that goes to your cord, to your plug. Here's a couple of different views of the tuner. Here's a view of the circuit board before the tuner was removed. 
This photo shows the underside of the circuit board where the tuner mounts. It's been removed. But the yellow arrows show the mounting legs, the four mounting legs, their position. The only problem I had with this tuner, it being a generic tuner and not a Sony, is that the mounting legs, two at each end as you see here, the legs were too wide. In fact, they were about twice as wide as they needed to be. So you'll need to trim those on some tuners. And in order to do that, you need a really good pair of tin snips. But I trimmed them down and, and it worked just fine. These two photos show the tuner, both sides of it with the cover removed. If you'll Google your TV, you'll come up with some tuner numbers and then you can cross-reference if you have to. I took the cover off of this tuner hoping that I could find maybe a cold solder joint or a crack in the circuit board, but uh, I couldn't come up with anything, so I just ordered a new tuner. This view shows the circuit board where the tuner has been installed, works fine, ready to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little how-to video. Come see me again sometime. I'm here in the beautiful foothills of North Carolina, and what you see here is Moses Cone Lake, Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Beautiful place. God has given me a lot of skills, and I try to use those skills to help people when I can. Hope you do the same.